also if you can keep the camera uh, on. So the event of today is organized by uh, the Global Participation and Displacement Working Group of the Global CCM Cluster in collaboration with the Community Engagement Forum. Um, this working group has been active since uh, 2018. Uh, it's a working group of the Global uh, CCM Cluster that is committed to foster uh, participation, community engagement uh, among uh, CCM practitioners. So I've seen uh, from the chat that uh, there are quite a number of CCM practitioners, so it's great to see that. So over the years, maybe some of you has been um, part of our webinar initiative before. So over the years, we have organized several uh, webinars and events uh, online, like this one, but also uh, in person during the annual uh, uh, global CCM uh, uh, meetings. Um, with a particular focus, uh, I mean, around uh, um, participation, community engagement, with a particular focus on uh, participation of women and uh, uh, marginalized group. Um, over the years, the, this working group has also supported a number of initiatives uh, led by different CCM agencies. Uh, for example, uh, the Women's Participation Toolkit developed by OEM, uh, or um, for example, another example could be the Community Coordination Toolbox uh, led by uh, NRC. And um, from and yeah, I think. Kristen is posting also in the chat the links to these uh, resources. So uh, if you don't know them, you can uh, uh, you can have a look at them. So from all these different uh, initiative, uh, spontaneously it was formed like a yeah a community of practitioners, um, a global nectar of, of practitioners, uh, uh, mainly you know CCM practitioners, but not only. Uh, that uh, you know, this this community, this network uh, that was committed to um, yeah improve the way we work with the affected community. So since last year in 2022, we formalized uh, uh, this community of practice. Uh, we structurally we formalized a little bit more, mainly around uh, four. Um, uh, for objectives, so to stimulate learning through uh, training, uh, coaching, and mentoring, um, to organize and manage uh, a body of knowledge, so a repository of tools uh, around uh, community engagement and participation, uh, to disseminate base, best practice uh, uh, guidelines and, uh, and strategy, uh, and then uh, maybe this is the most important to um, yeah to create a space where uh, practitioners can help each other uh, during the daily work uh, uh, with affected community. So um, yeah, I mean at the moment uh, uh, this community engagement forum is facilitated by NRC with the support uh, of UNHCR. Uh, and in the chat, I think uh, Kristen is also posting. Uh, you know, the links, the necessary link to join the, the community of practice if you're interested. Then uh, this was a little bit the background to explain uh, the, you know, the uh, the participation displacement working group and then community engagement forum. But then uh, about today, so um, we would like to uh, open a discussion. This will be the first step around community led projects. Um, Today we will talk a little bit about what are the features uh, of community-led projects, what are the different phases, but in particular we would like to discuss with you based on your uh, experience, uh, what are the, the barriers and the challenge, but then also what are the enablers, what, are, um, what needs to be in place to make sure that this is uh, happening. And then also uh, if there are any useful tools or guidance or good practice uh, um, that have been developed so far. Um, as mentioned, this is a, a first step. I mean, it's a quite uh, a dense uh, topic um, and uh, there might be different aspects that uh, we need to look at. 
so this is, will be the first step and we will continue this discussion uh, during the CCM annual meeting in June. And then we will see if there will be, uh, I mean, uh, the need of uh, further follow up. So uh, just to say that, uh, I mean, uh, we know that it's complex and I mean, today we're just starting uh, a process together. Um, so uh, then I think uh, it's a moment to introduce you uh, the people that will lead you uh, uh, on uh, this session today. So uh, Kristen, uh, who is leading the Community Engagement Forum, uh, then Harry from NRC, uh, working for NRC in Sudan. Harry, I don't know if you can turn on the camera and then also I, I don't see you, but uh, yeah but we heard your voice before. And then Yunus that is working for NRC in Yemen. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, we will uh, we will have a first, uh, a first part all together uh, in plenary, uh, and then we will um, try to divide ourselves in, uh, in groups because we have a very large number. So I think if we want to have a bit of a discussion, we have to break down in smaller groups. And uh, but yeah, but uh, I hand over to Christine, so she will start the the first part. Um, if you have any questions, you can put in the chat. I will keep monitoring, so I will, uh, um, yeah, I will let you know, Christine, if there are any questions. Thank you. Thank you, um, Giovanna. Um, just there we go. And will you let me know if you can see? Yeah. My slide? Okay, thanks. Um, so, yeah, thanks very much for that introduction and the background and uh, putting it all into the context of, um, uh, of the larger discussions. Um, so I want to introduce just um, uh, why we're why we're discussing community-led projects today as a community engagement forum topic, um, what community-led projects are, uh, how we define them, just so that we're all on the same page um, for our further discussions today and afterwards. Um, and uh, um, so according to the Community Engagement and Accountability Framework developed by OCHA and used um, widely uh, by humanitarian agencies, you see here that um, there are three main elements of community engagement that helps achieve accountability to affected populations. And one of them is um, participation in decision making. And one of the ways that we can facilitate participation of the affected population, of the displaced population in decision making is through community led projects. Um, this is a very simplified version now of the participation ladder that um, um, many of you may have seen. Um, uh, there are many versions of this with uh, many additional steps, but I just wanted to remind ourselves of um, where we want to aim um, when it comes to facilitating participation of the, um, uh, of the displaced population. Um, and if we do believe that it is the the displaced population that know best um, uh, what their needs and priorities uh, and their solutions are. Um, um, we should really um, facilitate um, handing over the ownership of the whole process of um, the humanitarian assistance um, um, and the decision making when it comes to the humanitarian assistance to the displaced population. And one modality for doing that is through community led projects. And that's why I want to talk about this today. So in very brief, um, how we define community-led projects um, is about handing over the project design and implementation um, to the community. So based on their priorities, um, there should be agreed project criteria um, uh, between the supporting agency and the um, uh, and the displaced community themselves, um, as well as with other involved stakeholders, whether that is the, um, the UN agencies or local government, etc. Um, but there should be agreed project criteria in place. 
Um, it should build on community-based solutions and action plans, and it should include handing over cash or assets for implementation to the community. Um, it must also include coaching and support from the humanitarian agency, um, whether that's a camp management agency or other. And these community-based solutions that they should be based on, um, these are solutions that needs to be identified by the community and be based on the skills and resources and capacities and knowledge that you can find within the community themselves. Um, they can be material, but they can also be non-material. For example, development of uh, advocacy messages or establishment um, of community groups with specific responsibilities, like youth groups or community watch groups um, or training sessions. Um, but and it could also be a mix of material and non-material um, support. And the humanitarian agency should support when necessary, but ideally the community can continue to drive the solution without the agency's support um, going towards the future. Um, we divide the community-led projects um, into three main phases to be able to identify the activities and the steps and um, plan accordingly. So we talk about the preparation phase, um, which is what the camp management agency or other agency um, planning the community-led projects is responsible for, making sure there's a budget, uh, trained staff, um, and also training and support of community structures so they're able to start um, developing these community-based solutions. Um, uh, agreeing on selection criteria for um, how to choose the, the community-led projects if there are many suggested, uh, as well as forming a selection committee. Um, these activities that we mentioned in these three phases, um, they're not the only activities. There could be many more, but these are um, um, some of the key examples. Um, and the planning phase it should involve the community from the start. So that's when you identify and prioritize the problem that they want to address. And the humanitarian agency should take a, a coaching role um, uh, and help the community develop community-based solutions and also conduct a, a resource mapping and a needs assessment for what kind of support, um, training, et cetera, that they will need to be able to implement um, the project. And then the implementation phase should involve coaching as well as uh, uh, material or um, cash support uh, and also um, any kind of specific uh, technical support that they might need, um, whether that is from the supporting agency themselves or the agency can help identify partners in the area that can uh, provide the support through the community. Um, now, We've called on um, on um, our community-led project experts, uh, Eunice from Yemen and uh, uh, Henry in Sudan, to help us provide some examples. Let me see if I can stop sharing. Um, for what kind of uh, enablers and um, and barriers that they have met um, in their implementation of um, the community-led projects. Um, Eunice, do you want to start? Um, um. Yeah, I can start. Thank you, Christine. Um, uh, from my side, I will exhibit to you some examples which show uh, some challenges that we faced during the implementation of the community led project in Yemen and also what's the way uh, to improve those kind uh, of challenges and how we can uh, mitigate them during any coming uh, uh, New project. So, can I share with you my screen now? Let's see. Yeah. Yes, it's I coming on you there. Are seeing. Okay. Yes, we can see it. Yes, as you see in the picture, I have three examples of the community lead project that we implemented. One of them 
is about uh, conducting cleaning campaign in the IDB six site. And the second one is about upgrade the latrine of uh, the um, for the for the IDB six site. And the last one is uh, establish a new transitional shelter for the sites. So uh, the challenges or the barriers for those uh, kind of community lead projects are very, very long. And here I have five examples. Those examples will help us uh, during the session to uh, complete the group discussion that will come uh, after this uh, examples. So, for example, um, in community lead project, we cannot include all community to implement it, the, uh, the activities itself. It's dependent on the kind of the project itself. For example, if we are, uh, for example, if we uh, implemented specific activities that for a specific uh, people, we cannot include all people like women and children in some activities that need construction work. And for example, we can include only women for specific livelihood activities. So one of the challenges uh, that we are facing, we cannot include all community uh, during the implementation, uh, which create a lot of um, tension between the community themselves and tension with the host community who in the surrounded area. The second. Um, the second the challenges is the the capacity and the skills of the the people who uh, or the project uh, participant who implemented the activities as you see in the second uh, photo if and we provide them with the skills and uh, we provide them support technical support we cannot increase the capacity of the uh, community who implemented the the, the activity itself so uh, we we saw a lot of um, activities with different quality of the implementation. It is dependent on the uh, the community themselves how they can learn the skills during the implementation, especially for the activities that implemented through uh, cash for work, and also um, uh, some in some uh, project we cannot uh, complete the work, especially uh, for cash for work. Sometimes we start uh, giving the people um, the payment in settlements, not once. And after we provide them with, uh, with the materials, then we provide them with some training and uh, provide them with the, a little money to start implementing the activities. Unfortunately, some people just get that material, then they cannot yani, complete it, the work. As you see in the last picture, some of the the shelter has been prepared, but some in the behind still without any work. So those some of the uh, challenges that we are facing during the implementation of the community also uh, uh, due to the, the the huge gap and many criteria to select the 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 the, the, the problems and how can we solve it. We facing in the preparation step of the community lead project a challenge to select the, the 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 project itself, and then we face a lot of problem to select the beneficiary who will implement the activities. So um, you can go to the second slide to explain how we can uh, improve those kind of challenges, which will be needed uh, in our uh, coming group discussion. Yes, some of the the way uh, forward to uh, to solve those kind of challenges is increase the awareness of the community. Uh, so uh, in the beginning of the proposal uh, of the of the project, we should conduct a focus group discussion with the community and explain to them how to identify the project and how to identify the needs. And according to that, we will give them a criteria selection 
uh, in terms of uh, number of uh, people who will participate in this project, uh, the, uh, the available fund that we get, the time that we can do the resources in the, the, in the, in the surrounded area. So we should uh, consider a lot of factors and share those factors with the, the community. So this is will give them a side view which project can be implemented and which one cannot. Also, um, we should uh, increase the community engagement and negotiation with all different uh, stakeholders, the government and the, the cluster and the service providers and community leaders and trust the community. If we include those stakeholders during the whole process of the community lead projects, the implementation will go smoothly and we will not face any difficulties to implement our activities. And also if we provide a skilled, uh, a skilled people who support the people during uh, the work of uh, um, cash for work, for example, if you are implemented uh, activity related to the latrine, we should bring wash colleagues from different uh, agency to support us to provide us with the ICE material and also provide us with the, some instruction so we can support the the, the community who implements this activity and also support our team to explain to them and I explained in the beginning uh, we should identify and prioritize the gap and the issue and problem and if we do that we will came up with the community solution and action plan easily. This is all uh, from my side, and I think this explanation, this, this uh, I mean, example will support us during the coming exercise. And we can collect from your side what is the challenges and what is the, the way forward to improve those challenges. And over to Christina and the other, if anyone have any questions. Thanks so much, Yunus. Um, um, it's great to have you here with all your um, experience and examples. Um, 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 I want to hear from Henry as well, um, what he can uh, contribute from both his Nigeria and uh, uh, Sudan experience, um, which is a little bit different from um, the um, the Yemen experience. Are you there, Henry? Yes, Christine. Uh, I, can you share your screen or should I share what I have sent you? I, yeah, I can share it. Yeah. Hang on. Okay. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're joining. Uh, so, I would like to talk about uh, CLP uh, according to my experience, mainly in Nigeria and Sudan. Uh, for us, uh, we did uh, quite a different context, quite a different uh, activities in Sudan and in Nigeria. And I've faced a lot of challenges, uh, both internally and externally, uh, which is uh, NRC-wise and other external factors, it's, it's CLP. Uh, in Nigeria, we worked uh, with uh, women, uh, we worked with women uh, to provide uh, skills for women. Uh, before displacement, certain women had tailoring skills and had an income generating ideas with, before the, uh, the conflict. So we worked with, uh, I think, 400 women uh, on skills such as tailoring, perfume making, soap making, where they were trained. And after three months, they uh, provided uh, seed money and tailoring kits to go start up tailoring business. And they agreed to train other women from the camp. Uh, so this was focused on women participation in Nigeria. While, while in Sudan, uh, we worked with uh, actually youth groups and women groups. Uh, for, for Sudan, with youth groups, we agreed to rehabilitate a youth center, uh, which they used uh, for meetings, uh, for community engagement, uh, where they learned skills such as learning English, uh, uh, learning uh, how to read and write in English, why the women's group were used as a women's sex space, which we had to re rehabilitate. Uh, biggest challenges I've, I've faced uh, in doing CLP, I used, I used to say it's, uh, after you've done the preparation phase, after you've engaged the community, talked about uh, CLP, 
uh, after you've done your capacity building plan, after you've done your capacity building plan to your teams, uh, you've engaged the community leaders, uh, and then you, when you want to start implementing CLP and you ask, uh, you ask the community to identify projects, they come up with 20, 30 different projects and request for funding for this. So one of the biggest challenges is selecting a project. Uh, as much as you don't want to interfere uh, with the selection process, as much as you don't want to inter interfere with the whole identification and selection, it's difficult to prioritize. Uh, going back to the community uh, to say, okay, this cannot work, this can work. So you have to manage your expectations from the beginning. Uh, you have to clearly uh, uh, delineate the scope of the project, uh, clearly define the scope, clearly define the issue and the guidelines. Uh, you have to also have patience because it's, it's, it's a work in progress. It, 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 it takes time. CLP is not what you do in three, three months. Uh, you have to have a lot of time and patience to really go back and forth with the community to understand what are the scope, uh, what is permissible, what are your limits. So also your budget. This is a very big uh, challenge working with, uh, with, with CLP. Also, uh, balancing donor contractual uh, obligations and community needs. Uh, the community might have a, a brilliant idea, but your, 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 your donor could not fund those projects. Uh, I've had situations where donors say we can't work with local authorities, or we can't work with these groups. So it's difficult to also manage those expectations, reporting guidelines, uh, documentation needs, both donor-wise and Organizational wise, it's, it's difficult also managing those those issues. Uh, uh, like uh, Uni said, issues like social cultural influence in certain contexts, uh, women are not allowed to really participate. Women are not allowed to make decisions. So in in Nigeria, we had to seek the consent of their husbands for them to learn these skills because they had to leave the camp. So it, it's also difficult to if you have a context where it's really limited on women. It's also difficult to, 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 to develop a project targeting only women. So uh, you have to have a good community engagement, community consultation, and actually work your way through the levels of participation. Uh, next slide. Yes, uh, talking about uh, enablers, after talking about challenges, uh, the very first one I always tell Christian is, you have to have flexible funding for you to do CLP. Uh, if you don't have flexible funding, it's actually difficult. Uh, do not do CLP with donors who are who have very strict strict guidelines, requirement reporting, uh, contractual guidelines. So you also seek to try to seek flexible funding uh, to to so that it's easy for you. Because if you are doing CLP and you are telling the community they have the right to decide, it doesn't make sense to come up to them and say no, we can't do this. So have flexible funding and do not start CLP at the first six months of the project. If you are implementing CCCM in a site or a camp or wherever in, in the first instance, do not start CLP. You have to get through the levels of participation, just as Christine sh shared in the level of participation, you must have gotten to the level of uh, uh, beyond uh, information sharing, gone to the level of consultation ownership, where you could trust the community to make decisions for themselves. Uh, so there is no time frame, six months, three months, but you have to be sure. You have to have community structures identified already, active and inclusive. Uh, you have to have uh, people who are able to make decisions, people who are highly trusted in the community. Like the last one said, you should have a, the community must trust the leaders. If there's no trust in the community, it's difficult to work with. Uh, so because you have to work with certain people, you can't work with 2,000 people, you have to work with representatives. So identifying those people who are trusted by the community. So it, it takes a while, it takes time. So I tell people, uh, take it, don't, there's not, don't, do not put targets on yourself. I have to do this in the first six months. I have to do this in the first uh, phase of the, of the project. I would like to see CLP towards the, the end of uh, the care cycle, towards the closure, towards durable solution, not towards the setup phase or the care maintenance phase, but towards the come closure aspect of cycle of CCCM, where the community have actively been engaged and they are participating. Uh, thank you. How about you, Christine? Thank you, I'll stop sharing. Um, I'll hand over to you, Giovanna, there in case there are any questions. 
No, I mean, I don't see any question in the chat, but uh, if anybody would like to put any questions for uh, Eunice and Harry in the chat, or just raise your hand um, before we move to the yeah, to a group discussion. I don't see anybody, Kristen, so I don't know if you want to. I oh, know it is. There is somebody. Yeah. Um, I think the question is, how was the sentence of the community? I'm guessing about community led projects. Erin, Judith, can you just mention, say a few words about uh, uh, two, there are two questions actually. If you can briefly answer to this one, it would be great. One is about the yep. substance of the community. So when you propose them, how they react. And also, if you have uh, an idea about how it could be a found for CLP. Yes, for the first one, uh, we accepted to implement it uh, to be to uh, the community. And in fact, before contacting a community lead project, we should activate the community committee and establish the community governance. If we have committee, then we can start. Otherwise, we cannot start community lead project. In terms of the budgeting, uh, unfortunately, um, as you know, because the community uh, who uh, identify the the project and also the community who identify the community based solution it is difficult during a proposal development to uh, estimate the budget but according to the experience from other agency uh, the cluster in each country uh, give a prepare a guidelines based on the average budget for a different community lead project and site maintenance uh, interventions and based on that, for example, in Yemen, uh, the cluster uh, estimated the minimum budget for uh, community lead project is 500 and the maximum is 15,000. So this is average based on the different community lead project that implemented in the, uh, at the country level. Uh, this is will help us at least to uh, provide uh, the, the um, estimated cost and estimated number of beneficiary who will benefit during proposal development. Then according to that, we will prepare the actual one and uh, maybe we'll, we need 5% um, maximum uh, increase or this, this is increase from this uh, budget. As we explain, donor should be flexible with uh, the agency that implemented community lead project. Uh, I hope this answer those two questions. Maybe Henry, if you have anything, please go ahead. OK, uh, thank you uh, for acceptance. I always say it. Uh, you, you, there's no CLP without acceptance. Uh, it's community led. Uh, you bring up an idea and they run with it. So like Uni said, you have to have community structures set up and active for a long, for a, a given period of time, and then you you tell them, you just tell them, I have this amount of, I have this amount of money. Don't tell them amount of money, just whatever how you want to do it. You you approach the community structures and say, uh, we have a flexible funding and we would like you to come up with ideas that would benefit the community. So if they don't come up with ideas, I mean, it's not accepted. If they come up with good with ideas, I mean, it's, they have acceptance. So you have to have community acceptance to, have, to, do, to do implement camp management to a certain level. So uh, before you do CLP, there must be acceptance. The community must accept to take charge, accept to participate fully, uh, and accept to do it freely. So these are ideas you have to have before you even think about CLP. If you are in a contest where the community do not come for meetings except you pay them, then you are not in the right contest to do, to do CLP. Uh, if everything is is being paid for, there's not there's no community participation, then you're not in the right contest to do CLP. Uh, that is uh, for CLP. Uh, then uh, for budget, like Uni said, depending on, on context, uh, cluster, organization for, uh, capacity, depending on also the ideas, the community float around you, you could come, you could have uh, limited capacity, and then the community have uh, have huge uh, needs or huge ideas, then you don't you're not able to fund them. So you have to actually maybe 
uh, do an intention survey, get to know what the community wants. And then you could do fundraising the next year or the next six months for the particular amount of money you need for CLP. So, uh, so it's just depending on on your on your capacity and what is identified by the community. So, like I said, flexible funding. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, Henry. We have uh, um, we have another question, then uh, and then the question. I think we need to move to the group work. So we have uh, another question from Amalia. Hi, Amalia. Uh, I don't see you, but. I know you're there. Um, so Amalia would like to know uh, if uh, um, from you uh, any specific challenge uh, to the participation of women and also example of donors that support CLP, if you have any. So Eunice and Henry, if you have just very briefly any points on these two questions from Amalia. Sorry, I am trying to read this question. Okay, let, let the, me go. Uh, let me go first. Yeah, you go, Harry. Okay. Go. Yes, uh, challenges to women participation. Like I, I said, uh, if your CLP is working towards empowering women with uh, with uh, income generating uh, activities, and you are in a context which is highly patriarchal uh, and highly where men in charge of the family, you are always going to have a conflict of interest and clashes with the community leaders. Because in context where women are, are, are believed to be at home, conservative, it's difficult for you to really engage women because you, you want these women to, to go out, to go to the training center, to be able to do business is difficult. So this is, this is difficult if you are having this kind of context. So you have to actually be careful and approach religious leaders, community leaders, even individual uh, beneficiaries, their husbands, you have to uh, approach them and uh, seek their consent for you to have this. So it's difficult if you are targeting women specifically, but if you're targeting both gender in the same project, it's easy uh, because these men always talk with their fellow men, but if it's just pure men, only women, so it's a bit difficult in, in conservative uh, context. Uh, for donors, uh, for donors which are, uh, are flexible CLP, I don't really know. I would say for NRC, I, I know quite a few. Uh, which donors I would like? To, I wouldn't want to do CLP with UNHCR funding. Uh, it's, it's 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 difficult. It's hard. Hard. There's so many layers to it. Uh, but if you have good, all these big time inst institutional donors, who you should actually ask your grant, speak with your grant team, speak to your finance team. Understand the contractual agreements to your funding before you do CLP. Uh, do not work as an island. Uh, shared ideas with your, your country management team, your supervisors. And in, in many places, you have to develop SOPs. You have to develop SOPs for payment, SOPs for activities. So seek support from your regional team, from your country team, and global team for that. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Henry. Thank you very much. Very uh, uh, interesting and useful tips. Uh, Younes? Yeah, I can answer for the next question. I think those questions uh, this uh, uh, answered by Henry regarding to how we can ensure those projects not overlapping. In the beginning, as I explained, we prepare something called gap matrix, identify all gaps and problems in the sites and then select the, the project that we can implement it. After that, we will share it with the CCM cluster who uh, share it with the different uh, core competency and clusters uh, and seeking if there is any agency, uh, specific agency can cover those gaps and then we can cover the rest of them. Uh, I am sure uh, in any site when we prepare this gap matrix, it, we will receive a pile of gaps. Impossible you need to come out without gaps. So uh, a lot of gaps will be uh, shared by the community. Then we will filter them according to the sphere standard, which يعني, which, which uh, activities can be implemented as a human thing aid agency and which one cannot. And then according to the criteria selection of the community lead project, we came up with a list of 
uh, community uh, community project that can be implemented by us and then share it with the different clusters who are working in the area and raise it at, 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 le at national level and subnational level. And when we didn't find any service provider who can cover those, we can consider them as a community project and go ahead with them. Over. Thanks a lot, Yunus. Thank you very much. Um, Chris, maybe there is. Sorry. Maybe there is. Maybe there is another, another question. Uh, how was first step of this project? Uh, honestly, in any community project, we should uh, uh, establish a community uh, governance and ensuring those governance are active. Then we we prepare the gap matrix. Uh, and uh, as explained by Christine, there are three phases with the detail step and sub activities for each one. And uh, we will come back in the exercise explain each one of those um, phases in detail. So uh, for coma, if I read uh, this name correctly, uh, maybe you can come back to the, the slide that uh, explained by Christine in detail. Over. Um, I think there is one more question. Should I? Should we? Uh, Mohammed, you have. A... Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Just I well, uh, would like to emphasize what uh, Mr. Yunus said about uh, how we can avoid overlapping in uh, community lead projects here in Yemen. Actually, we have a system called the RES reference collection system. Once the partner consulted with the beneficiaries and identified the most in need uh, interventions and consulted with the relevant authorities and avoid such landowners issues, HLB issues, uh, it referred the gaps to the service providers. All the agencies that uh, I mean intervening in the same area. Once he filled in the first step, uh, it's escalated to the subnational cluster coordinator who is ruled to coordinate with the respective cluster. For example, if the gaps identified, it's to construct water points or connecting uh, the water points with the, with the nearest well. Uh, we refer the gaps to the WASH subnational cluster at uh, field level and uh, national level. If he said, OK, you can go ahead, we don't have the capacity or we don't have a fund, at uh, this we can intervene as a last resort to avoid any duplication and overlapping and meet the needs with the people in need. Thank you and thank you, Unis, for clarification this point. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Mohammed. Um, Christian, I think we we need to move to the uh, yeah. the group work. Maybe not more than twenty minutes because then otherwise we won't have time. Yes. Um, I will. Um, I'll share now the link to. Um, to uh, the. Yeah. yeah, let me find it. Um, so I prepared some Google slides that um, the groups you you nominate a um, a note taker and the note taker can just type directly into the Google slides. They could, should be uh, editable by anyone. Um, and please do not consider any grammar or any um, any that you need to have a. Um, um, the correct full sentences or anything, just write um, whatever you like and um, I will tidy it up later. Let's see now in the chat. Christian, um, um, in the meantime, mm, just let mm. me mention something. Yeah. Uh, since there is a question that, uh, you know, we cannot go in, in that uh, because it's a, it's a big one. Uh, it's a question about uh, the technical the community leaders and uh, working with them, and how important uh, is the role uh, for the CLP, so for the um, community-led project. Uh, I, on this, I just wanted to um, yeah, mention that in the community coordination toolbox that we shared the link before, uh, there is uh, a lot of tools around uh, you know how to build uh, representation groups. That then you know potentially you could use it in community led project. Sorry if we cannot go more in depth than that today. Yeah, and but you yeah. can also contact me um, yeah. via the community engagement forum or my email address. I can share it now. Um, um, anytime if you want more information on on how to do that. Um, I'll just show you now what we are planning to do to break into a few smaller groups. 
um, to learn from you, um, um, uh, you know, what you see as, as the main barriers and uh, and enablers. Um, um, I want to collect it all, like I was saying, and I'll, I'll clean all the notes up later and collect it all um, um, in the proper document. So here in the Google Slides, I've just added a reminder of what community-led projects are um, um, and the three phases. And we want to uh, break you into groups per phases. So I think we're over 100 participants here. Um, so maybe we'll focus on maybe we'll, if we have uh, um, six groups, is that too many participants in each group? Um, um, because I see that there's also Malik, you're here, aren't you? Um, um, Malik is one of the advisory board members uh, for the Community Engagement Forum, and he's also responsible for community-led initiatives um, for um, uh, units here in northern Syria. Um, so he could lead one group. And um, and uh, uh, Hamza, are you here as well? Can't hear him, but I think he is. So what we want you to do is to fill out like this. Um, um, here we have for the preparation phase, the barriers, challengers, the enablers of what you think needs to be in place um, 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 uh, and any useful tools that you're familiar with or ha have used. Um, so I will uh, stop sharing and divide you into groups now. Um, now it is 10 to. So um, if um, um, if I bring you back in 20 minutes um, and then don't worry about saving the slides, it automatically saves. So um, um, just type away and we'll come back in plenary then after 20 minutes um, um, and um, continue our talking. And then maybe Christian, just to mention uh, that uh, we can also record the question doubts. I mean, uh, if you have, a, I mean, whoever is recording is good to record any point of the conversation because even, uh, you know, even question doubts or, um, yeah, I mean, everything yes. is useful at this stage where we are unpacking a little bit the exactly. project. Exactly. Um, okay. Let me put you into six groups and we'll see how this goes. Um, Okay, we can join the room. You should. Mm -hmm. I'll you try should and move see. you around a bit, Giovanna and Eunice and Henry, if, if you're all in the same one. Okay, so. No, it's okay. 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 How do I join? Целый момент так мотивирует работать. 